Hello and welcome to this edition of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs. I'm your host, Colin Jason, Happy Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, I will be taking a look at various topics as seen through the lens of the technology known as Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parse Syntax Grammar. Wonderful technology brought to the public by the late colon David Ivan Colin Miller. It is a podcast of opinion. It's my opinion on various matters, and it has to do with my, uh, I guess you could call it, world cultivation, world knowledge cultivation claim that I'm trying to educate and cultivate the knowledge level of those who are interested and serious about learning this technology. And this podcast has to do with the psychology of said grammar, which no one ever talks about, that I've ever seen anyways. I've kind of developed this this part of it. It's one of the things that I like to think that I've added to the domain. And so the topic of this particular podcast is going to be nepotism. It's going to be a touchy one. The people that would probably benefit most from hearing this probably will not hear it simply because of who I am. But hopefully some what I like to call fence riders will hear it and maybe begin to think for themselves for once instead of blindly following along with beliefs. Now, what is nepotism? You can take a moment to look that up on Google. I know lots of people are very fond of, uh, (laughs) Jason, what does this word mean? What does that mean? What does this mean? Is this no contract? Blah, blah, blah. When they can very easily do the work themselves and figure it out instead of me just spoon feeding it to them. So if you want to, if you don't know what it means, look it up on Google. You'll find it very quickly. I have witnessed and also been a part of nepotism in the past by virtue of who I was or who I knew. I've seen it work in beneficial ways, and I've seen it work in detrimental ways. I've seen people not qualified to do a job, get a job, simply because of who they knew, thus excluding qualified individuals from getting that job. That's nepotism. I was able to get jobs at places that I probably wouldn't have gotten a job at, Not because I wasn't qualified, but because I didn't know anyone there, simply because I did know someone there. It's across the board. This is the way it works. I've gotten people jobs because I knew them, and they wouldn't have gotten that job if they wouldn't have known me. This is nepotism. Now, the way I just explained to you the way it works in a detrimental way, when you get someone who gets a job position who is not qualified to do the job. There's a title that they're assigned and they're not qualified to perform on that title, but they got it through nepotism. Or to put it another way, they were grandfathered in simply because their dad worked there, their brother worked there, their sister, their mother, their cousin, their grandfather, grandmother. Isn't that right, Bertie? Bertie agrees with me. That's nepotism. Now, how does this relate to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar? Well, I'm certainly glad that you asked that question, and I'm going to answer it right the freak now. So, quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, was developed and published by Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. He's the one that brought this stuff to the public. All right? He was out there doing seminars and so on and so forth. He had a protege, a student, an apprentice. And that individual's name was Russell J. Gould. Now, they did a lot of things together, but it was very obvious and very clear that anyone who watches any of those videos 
especially ones with David and Russell together, who the boss is, who the teacher is, who the master is, and who the apprentice is. It's very easy to see who that is. It's very easy to make that distinction between the two. When David's talking, Russell doesn't talk. When Russell's talking and David interrupts, Russell shuts up. That simple. And David did interrupt him a lot. So that's, uh, that's, that's the scenario we have. We have, plus David was a much older man. Russell was very young when they got together. And Russell actually came to live with David. David allowed Russell to come and live in his house. So my guess is it was, you know, from what I know, from speaking to other people that knew them both, and from speaking to David, and from watching videos, I can kind of guess that there was some kind of <clears throat> weird dynamics going on in that relationship. Sort of like a mix of father-son, uh, sort of like a marriage, sort of like brothers, all mixed together, very volatile at times. I was a witness to some video communications where both men said very, very disparaging things about the other, calling each other's intelligence into question, their knowledge levels, uh, making accusations of mental conditions, um, you know, <laughs> so on and so forth. I mean, they're only human, right? And they had a volatile relationship. Point being, when David passed away in 2018, there was only one person left in the construct that he created. David once said to me, one is opinion, two is certification. Russell and I certify one another. If I write something, if I write a document, I'll send it to Russell. He'll proofread it and certify it. If he writes something, I'll proofread it and certify it. Two is certification. One is opinion. If you take one of us away, if one of us quits or dies, then two becomes one, and now it's an opinion. So that's exactly what happened. David died, and Russell became the singular shareholder of the construct that they created. I'm not going to call it a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar construct because, quite frankly, I can't find any proof of correct grammar in any of those documents. And I've proven that. So that's a non-issue. But the, point, the reason I'm saying this is because Russell basically through a monopoly, uh, a monopolizing situation, grandfathered himself in to be the sole owner of this construct that he's talking about. And by the construct he's talking about, it was David Wynn Miller's construct. Russell ingratiated himself into that position. I have shown again and again that his grammar is not correct. I've shown the mistakes. You can just look at the positionals, positionals that he uses alone that void the mathematical interface, not to mention the hundreds of other errors. I've made this quite clear in other locations. You can check those videos out on my channel, especially in the Coral Blade Grotto broadcast section. So what happened was this basically nepotism. Russell grandfathered himself in to be in charge. No one authorized him to be in charge. He authorized himself. But guess what? As I stated before, the way nepotism works, a lot of times a person will get a position that they're not qualified for. They don't have the knowledge level to perform on the job. You have to have proof, don't you? You have to prove that you can perform on the job title that you claim. You can't just say, 
I've done this, that, and the third. And so just take my word for it. I'm this guy. No. You can tell stories all day long. Stories do not count as certification, authorization, or anything else. Knowledge does. Absent of certification, knowledge will do that, fill that void. What do I claim, ladies and gentlemen? I claim to be a grammar tutor. I claim to teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. What is the certification of that? I have 500 videos on my YouTube channel that I've created that teach the mechanics of correct sentence structure from multiple different angles. That's one certification. Five years worth of material. Name one other individual out there that has a, a YouTube channel that even comes close. Another certification. I have hundreds of students that I've taught. Some of them have done one workshop. Some of them have done two. Some of them have done 20. They are certification of what I do. Some of them comment on my YouTube channel. If you want, you can comment on their comment and ask them what they think of me. That's certification. You can reach out to Colon Ricardo, Colon Marseille. Ask him. These are all certifications. Or, and I mean, geez, Odin forbid you do this one. But you can perhaps reach down inside your intestinal fortitude and email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and ask me those questions that you want to ask me if you require some sort of certification for what I do. Nothing beats that. We can do a face-to-face video consult. 10 to 15 minutes. I will gift you 10 to 15 minutes to ask me whatever you want. And I guarantee you, 9.9999 times out of 10, I will answer your question without hesitation. So to get back to what I was saying, Russell basically grandfathered himself in sort of a, mono, mo, a monopoly version of, of this. Now, also, I have been told by Russell's followers that I am not authorized to teach his grammar. Well, I couldn't agree more. I don't want to teach his grammar. His grammar is not correct. So whatever grammar that he's copyright copy claimed with his flag with the spire on top of it at war with the people by his own admission, whatever that is, I don't want anything to do with that. He can have that. I'm not using that. What I'm using is correct grammar. I'm using correct grammar mechanics, correct positional sequencing. No particles of negation in the facts. The verb is in the correct place. With a cause, concern, possessive authority. That's the mechanic. Those are the mechanics I use. I don't use what he's using. So while I may not be authorized to use whatever he's using, I don't want to use it. I don't need his authorization. Authority gives authorization. If you know what it is you're doing, you can do it. Let me ask you a question. Who authorized David Wynn Miller to be a chief federal postal judge? or a plenipotentiary judge, or any of the number of titles that he claims. Who authorized him to do that? Where did he get authorization to do that? Same thing with Colin Russell, hyphen J. Colin Gould. Who authorized Russell to be postmaster general, commander-in-chief? You know what I'm thinking. I don't think he ever claimed to be commander-in-chief until after David passed. Am I correct on that? I'm not sure. But I know he did claim postmaster general. He claimed a military title when he was never in the military. But anyways, who gave him authorization to do that? Who gave him authorization to be muster master? Did someone give him that? Are there some other people out there who are higher up on the echelon as a shareholder that authorizes what he does or doesn't do? Because if there is, I haven't seen any proof of it. As far as I know, it's just him. So who authorized him? Nobody. According to him, if you watch his videos, 
authority comes from knowledge. He and David authorized themselves to walk into those venues. They educated themselves. And at the time, whatever their knowledge level was, was sufficient to supposedly walk through those venues safely. I don't know if they did or they didn't. I don't have any proof of it. What I do have proof of is that they were in and out of court dozens of times around the year 2012, 2011. I can find evidence of that in the fiction on Google, on the internet. If you Google their names, you will see these things. What I don't have proof of is whether they were successful or not, or what exactly happened. But I do know that they were doing things. So as to what those things were, I don't know for sure. I saw that they were experimenting with techniques and things like that. You can see it too if you look it up. Anyways, the point I'm making is you. Why is it that you are different than him? If he truly participates with rule one, rule equal in a geometric level playing field of contract. If he didn't need anyone's authorization to do what he does or did or claims to have done, then why do you? Why can't you participate with the same principles that he did? Do you teach yourself? You use your knowledge level and now you're the authority, not him, you. This is a rhetorical question, ladies and gentlemen. And if you even have to think about that for longer than a second, you might be an authoritarian follower. If uh, I'd highly recommend some help with that. Because authoritarianism is a horrible thing from my perspective. Some people like it. Some people like being told what to do. Some people like a nanny state. They like to have someone above them that they think is going to take care of them. (laughs) but basically when you look at Russell J. Gould what is he doing he wants to take whatever his system is his system of grammar whatever it is that he talks about and he wants to implement that in place of the fiction system using the same fiction principles it's the same thing with Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher he wants to use the same fiction principles he still wants to put people in jail he still wants to use capital punishment final solutions, and he wants to be the be-all, end-all judge of who gets put in jail, who gets killed, so on and so forth. It's the same thing. It's a fiction system, but with a different coat of paint slapped on it. Nothing to do with correct sentence structure at all. Nothing. That's the same thing that Mark did, basically, too, I might add. He grandfathered himself in, and he didn't even have anything to do with that except as a periphery uh, hanger-on who ingratiated himself into David's life during the last days of his life and ingratiated himself into the family, which I don't even know what's going on with that anymore. I know that there were some pretty shady things going on in 2018. That's all I can say. But again, I digress. And I want to also... Now that I've said this about rule one, rule equal and all that, I want to add this in here. Maybe YouTube will catch it. Maybe it won't. I want to talk about the Second Amendment real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know why the Second Amendment Amendment of the past tense United States uh, was ratified? Do you know why they made that? What the purpose of it was? The purpose of that amendment was so that, based upon the principle of we the people, It's rule one, rule equal. The people are on the same geometric level playing field as the government, theoretically. We, the people, are the government. The government is us because we elected them. This is all theoretical, by the way. This is in principle, not reality. But in principle, this is what happened. The people are the government. Therefore, the government shall not have anything that the people can't have. So the Second Amendment basically stated that if the government can have a bolt-action rifle, then the citizen can have a bolt-action rifle. If the government can have uh, an AR-15, then the people can have an AR-15. If the government can keep 
this much ammo, then the people can keep this much ammo. It's to keep it so that the government never feels like they are dominating the people or that they can just bully the people. It's to keep basically a healthy fear of the people. So as long as the government's doing the correct thing, they don't have to worry about the people. Well, <laughs> we know that's pretty freaking far from what's going on right now. But that, that was the original volition behind that amendment. <clears throat> very, <clears throat> I think very quickly though, that was nullified. And uh, things changed and were modified very quickly. Which will happen because the whole system of the past tense United States was rotten from the core anyways. Because it was built on genocide, the murder and subterfuge of taking land from people who were already there. Now other people may say, well, it doesn't matter because the, pe the First Nations were already fighting and killing each other. Okay, that doesn't make it right for some totally, like take for example this, say we all exist right here, we're all doing this, that, whatever we're doing, and all of a sudden, quote unquote, aliens come down from space and they just start killing us and occupying our homes. How would you feel about that? Would you be okay with that? Like, well, fair is fair. We did that to the Indians, so I guess they can do that to us. <clears throat> yeah, you better not whine about it either, patriots. All right, that's enough of that. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, this is a podcast of opinion. Uh, I don't side on left or right. I don't participate with Hegelian dialectics. I just try to see things for what they are through the lens of correct sentence structure and try and bring a little bit of logic to the table rather than participating with assumption, presumption, and authoritarianism. I'm a big, big critic of authoritarianism. I know that it's necessary in constructs such as the military. Because if you don't have that in place, you're not going to be an effective military. But outside of that, it's not necessary. If you really want everyone to be equal, it's not necessary. If you want to learn this grammar, hit me up at the email address at the bottom of your screen. If you want to join the channel membership, there are two tiers available. Go ahead, click on the uh, join button and all the pertinent information will make itself available. Tier two has exclusive content not available to the public. And I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you next time.